Hi everybody. Hope you're doing well. Today's Wednesday and I'm going to combine the fluid art and craft show together today. Um, I found a clock kit in my closet, <laughs> craft closet. I thought oh, that would be really neat to do something with the um, with the clock kit. So I've seen a couple of people have forward a video about fluid art using a strainer. So I thought, okay, we can do that, right? And it took a little bit of time to discover the secret to doing a picture with a strainer, okay? And I'll let you in on it right now, save you some time. These little strainers I picked up, I think I got this one at the Dollar General, got this one at Dollar Tree, got this one at Walmart, trying different kinds. And what I have found that these strainers with the flat bottom do not work very well. It doesn't let your paint seep out. So I thought, okay, I'll try another one. This had a little bit of curve to it. And it didn't do very well at all. So I thought, okay, we'll try another one. And I picked this up the other day at Dollar General. And it's real cute, it's got a little turtle in the middle. It's a sink strainer. But as you see, it's dome, and that's the secret. So when you're paint, pouring your paint, your dirty pour in the middle, it has space to come out, and these little holes will actually make the design with your paint. And I did this the other day. kind of a shell design and I didn't intend on doing a shell design that's just the way it ended up and that's the beauty of the fluid art is you might have something in your mind and you go to pour it you go to do it and it just takes a life on its own <laughs> hi Roseanne thanks for joining today hope you're doing well we just started and this is a finished and it's finally dry. It took several days for it to dry. In fact, I was really iffy about whether or not it would be ready to work with today. The humidity here has been just unbearable. But I'm gonna set this aside and we'll come back to it in a few minutes. I have a record album or a record as People are calling them these days vinyl. This one is very old. It's got some scratches. Can't play it anymore. So I thought, okay, it's going to go, it's going to be repurposed into better times. And this is a Lazy Susan. So if I want to turn it, I can. I have a bowl. Just a small dip bowl, soup bowl, plastic vinyl thing that I'm going to put in the middle. So when I'm pouring the paint, it can puddle in the bowl instead of on the bottom. And this will help take the record up off of the Lazy Susan too, to, for me to be able to turn it. And let's see, let's get started. We have... Oh, very important, any time that you're painting on a non-porous subject, the um, apple barrel labels there's gloss. And the Folk art labels there's enamel. 
these paints will adhere to a non-porous subject. There are a couple of other ones out there that do the same thing. The outdoor, I'm looking around for my bottles. I don't have them handy right now. The uh, little craft paints that's labeled outdoors. Um, thank you, Roseanne. I'm not going to tell you how old this shirt is. <laughs> but it goes back a long ways. She likes this shirt. Peace. Um, but the best thing to do when you're doing a painting on a non-porous subject is to read the label. And it will tell you. This says um, excellent coverage, fast drying, water-based, non-toxic, use on all porous and non-porous surfaces. So with that being said, and it says fast drying, well, it would be if we didn't add any Floetrol to it. But to get the fluidity that you need for this fluid art, you have to add either Floetrol. Um, there's a product in Canada and UK called Otrol, O-W-T-R-O-L. And... Um, those are the only two that I'm aware of. Um, the artist line of their paints and mediums, they do have um, painting mediums that you can add into your paint to make them stay wet longer, a um, little bit more fluid to it. Uh, there's some that are textured. It's a whole world, whole big, huge world out there in the art and craft area. I would recommend that just experiment, see what you like and what you don't like. And that's basically what I have done um, a lot here lately is just experiment and have fun with it. So what we have to do now and I'm hoping, so we can use this one, is to mix up our paint. And I'm gonna turn the camera down so you'll be able to see the workspace. But I have, have some green, kind of a pink, magenta, orange, and a cross between navy blue and a cobalt blue. I know that sounds weird, but I didn't have a full bottle of the dark blue, so I just mixed the two together and it came out to be a really pretty color, really pretty color blue. So I'm gonna pull the camera down. You'll be able to see the workspace. I'll cover the keyboard up so I won't have a reflection. There you go. And let's see. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I've put in the flow trawl. And I have not added any silicone to this because... I didn't want the big cells. I would just like to see the strainer, the designs of the strainer on the record. And real quick, before we go any further, we're going to clean this record with some rubbing alcohol. It'll get all of the dirt and the grit, the dust off of it, and prepare it for our enamel paint. And this is real simple to do. Take you a couple of paper towels. Put a little bit on the paper towel. This is 91% um, alcohol. So we're just going to lightly dust that. 
Give it a few seconds for it to evaporate before we put our paint on. It evaporates pretty quickly. This will help ensure that all the dust is off of it. And I'm going to try to keep my fingers off of it, off the front of it too, because I don't want any oil on my fingers on it. Get that out of the way. Okay. Now, this little cup holds five ounces. And we know that a 12 by 12 canvas for the fluid art takes approximately five ounces to cover. So I'm going to start with this cup full and we'll see what happens. I might have to end up pouring a little bit more into it. If, it, if I do, it's okay. If not, that's okay. So we have the green pink, orange, and kind of a cross between navy blue and a cobalt blue, and a pale light blue. Okay, move this in the front here, and white. White only has the flow trawl in it, no silicone. I'm going to move these back a little bit so you can see better. There you go. Okay. Let's see. Let's start with white first. Give it a good shake. And I appreciate y'all forwarding these videos. They're really interesting. And each time you watch something from a different person teaching, you learn something. It could be very minor or it could be something that you've never seen. So please, if you see anything out there, forward it to me, suggest it for a class. I think it would be a lot of fun. So we're going to add just a little bit of each color. Let's go with the orange next. I'm going to stir these a little bit because they've been sitting. And you see how your paint runs off fairly easy, nice and smooth. That's what you want. Okay. Uh, let's go with the pink. And then the green, nice consistency there. And as far as how much you add of each color, it's more or less your own judgment. You know, say you want more blue in your pour than you do want the other colors. I do have a word of caution, though, when you're I'm going to put some white in between this blue and green. Um, think about your colors and how they're going to meet. They're going to make contact. And it's just kind of like, your primaries, your reds and your blues and your yellows, well, you put red and the blue together, it's going to mix and it's going to make purple and so on. So think about that. I try to do the opposite. Let's see, here we go. Hi, Benjamin Smith. Good to see you. 
and Rose, Diane, good to see you too. Thank you all for joining today. Here we go. We're going to get started. This is our strainer and it has a little dome. We're going to put it in the center. And the dirty pour cup has all of our colors. I'm going to stir or swipe it from one side to the other, then from the top to bottom, and the bottom to the top, just so the colors can intermingle a little bit. I don't know how this is going to turn out. This is going to be a surprise to me, too, as much as it will be y'all. So that's, that's fluid art, right? Okay. And what I'm going to do here is just start pouring. And since this little guy has a turtle in the middle, I tried to get him off, but um, it must be melted together. The plastic must be melted together. He wouldn't come off. So here we go. Turn it a little bit. We will probably end up pouring some more paint in the dirty pour cup. It looks like this is not level. It's not wanting to flow out evenly. So the first, excuse me, the last color of paint that you pour into your cup is going to be the first one to come out. So if you wanted to kind of like guide it, We'll tilt it a little bit to see if I can get it to smooth out a little bit. If not, I don't want to lose a lot of the design. That's why I'm being careful here. Hi, Sherry. And sometimes with fluid art, you have to be really patient. And I think I am. I think I'm just going to add some more paint because I really like the way the design is. And if I keep tilting it, it's going to mess the design up. So I'm going to bring this back. And we went with white first. Went with navy blue. And then the orange. Pink, was it, or green? I think it was the green. I think I'm going to add some more white in between those two colors. Looks like it's kind of turning brown, and we don't want that. We want some nice, pretty, bold colors. Ooh, that was close. You see that? I almost knocked that cup over. Okay, I know that's going to be more than what we need. That's okay. We'll swipe it. All right, let's 
let's do some pouring. Here we go. Move this closer to you. This should start pushing the paint out again. Okay, it's just about covered the record. I'm going to do some tilting. That paint is thick. That's okay. You see how it's stretching it? And another trick on vinyl can actually bend it so that way it leaves the other side alone but it's pull, pulling what we want down I think what I'll do let's go over to this side I'm going to hold on to it here and pull down this side. There we go. That little clock kit wasn't very expensive and I've had it for a long time. I picked it up years ago thinking I'm going to do something with this one day. Well, the day finally came, right? But um, you could do all kinds of sorts of designs on these records and sell them. You can pick up the records at any of the, um, like Goodwill. We have a couple of donation centers around here that have boxes and boxes and boxes of records and they're relatively very inexpensive. In fact, that's one of the things I love to do when I go into these resale shops is I have to stop and look at the records. You never know what you're going to find in there. And there's nothing like music on a good record. All right, look what's happening. Our colors are spreading. That blue is looking really pretty with the pink. So let's see. I'll bring this down a little bit more. Back down a little bit more. I'm going to see if I can accomplish the shell design again. Go this way. Let's 
think it needs to be more angle on this side. Trying to get the sides a little bit even. There we go. It's stretching. There. We'll bring this down just a little bit here. No, oh, I kind of like that right there. I think I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to move this strainer out of the way so we can see the whole design. All right, you see what that did? Now it's going, the paint is actually going into the hole of the record. So it's kind of sucking it in there. All right. And this is what I did yesterday. I took it off to look at it. And then I thought, well, I'm going to put some white. So I'm going to put this back on here. There. And add the white. And it could have been done with any color. The white will show up better. Let's add a little bit more. Really would like for it to flow out. Remember patience. For some reason this is not flowing very well over on this side. So we've got a little bit of white going on all the way around. I'm going to pick this up, and that paint is going to flow into the middle. And I don't want any colors to drip from this strainer, so we're going to do that. There we go. And as you see, it's going to continue pouring in there. And it will actually, like, create a little haze. The colors might not be that dominant here in the middle. It'll get a little bit hazy. But that is our pour with the strainer. Quite interesting. And I think I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. Should I bring it down? <laughs> Y'all talk to me. I'm thinking this is the top part here. And this is the bottom. Or should I make it all, all the blue stretch out? Nobody's answering me, or we're in a time lapse. Let's see. Might not be able to. It's moving very slowly. Very, very slowly. There we go. It's starting to move. Looks like it was getting back, all being sunk into the hole. Stretch it out a little bit.
There we go. Well, thanks. There you go. Let's see. Well, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see what it does. It'll probably take a couple days for this to dry, but I will post a picture of it after it dries. I'm going to remove this and then we'll take this other record that I poured on the other day and we'll put the clock on it and see how that works. So I'll be right back. I'm going to move this out of the way. All right, here's the one from the other day. And believe it or not, it was the, all this white was just like that blue one. It was covered everywhere. And I left it alone for an hour and came back, and this is what the good Lord gave me. I was like, okay, I like that. So this little clock kit looks like this. It was only $4. And it came with a complete, complete kit. I'm going to turn it over so I can see the directions. But it has a battery compartment, a little knobby thing here. But what I didn't realize is for this record to fit, on the clock mechanism it was the hole is not large enough okay for this to go through i'm trying to get it to where you can see this thing right here it was too big for the hole in the record album so what i did is i took some of the poster board cut out a square Put a hole in it so it will be a cushion between this and the record and it works well this little washer goes on first and then we have this and then let's see there's another little washer that goes on and then a nut Let me see here. No, oh, wait. I think I have to. This goes on. So I have the clock mechanism, the little washer, poster board. But see, it's still not, still not working. Where's the other piece? Here we go. I have two pieces. There we go. That's what it was. I had to work with two pieces. And I'll clean these things up better. So that's going to go on top. There we go. And I think it worked a few minutes ago. What's going on? This is not working right. I'm an artist. I'm not a mechanic. So what I'm going to do is put this on. This is what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to put this on. Let's 
So we are discovering that might have to drill a larger hole. And I promise you all this went together a while ago when I put it together. I'm getting aggravated now. That goes there. And then last but not least, the second hand. We have to push down pretty hard for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak this a little bit, but you get the idea. For some reason, <sighs> there you go, a clock. So you can always drill a hole the right size or if you have a soldering iron with a round tip bore. Oh, that's a good idea, Roseanne. I would probably have to use the, um, the drill though, because I don't think we have a soldering iron, but that's a good idea. It doesn't need to be much larger. I mean, just like a split second and it would go on perfectly. But um, I'd like to say hi to Esther. Thanks for joining. And um, I hope you all enjoyed the show. And I'll show you the finished dry product of the one that we poured today in a couple of days when it's dry. And I will put the clock mechanism on that one so you can see what that looks like. But as you can see, for less than $10, you have a really nice piece of art and something that's very functional. And you could, you could sell them very easily. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. And um, I'll see you around. Bye for now.